Hi, welcome to Sacred Heart Academy. Uh, we were established in 1897, and our school has been recognized as a leader in elementary Catholic education in the Diocese of San Bernardino and throughout Southern California. For over 120 years, we've formed children of diverse backgrounds in an academically enriching and passionately Catholic Christian environment. We employ 21st century methodology in a caring community that in develops a whole child academically, spiritually, physically, and socially. And our alumni are our greatest ambassadors and they have carried this legacy forward by enriching our communities with their visionary work and service. So our student ratio is 16 to one because we have instructional aids in the classrooms and we differentiate instruction in the junior high with on target and honors classes. Um, our alumni success rate is fantastic, 100% are accepted into um, high school honors placement programs if they apply to that. Uh, we have a valedictorian and salutatorian and scholar athlete distinctions among our alumni. Uh, most recently, we have a, a senior at Redlands High School who just um, earned a full ride to Yale University and another senior who um, uh, is an alumni and she just got a uh, awarded a scholarship to the Air Force Academy. So those are just the recent ones that, that um, we're very, very proud of. Uh, our students consistently rank within the top 2% of high schools in the graduating class and recognized as leaders in student government, clubs, and sports. Most of our graduates attend uh, St. Thomas Aquinas High School where they hold leadership positions there. We're fairly accredited uh, by WCEA and we look forward to your visit. We have a highly qualified, credentialed uh, faculty. We have, many of us have our master's degrees. We have a on-site school counselor with a counseling degree and we have a campus minister on site. Uh, we are proud of our participation in the Academic Decathlon uh, hosted by the diocese. We've competed at the state level four out of 10 times. We've been awarded first place at the diocesan level um, and second place at the diocesan level and competed at state and those have been six and seven out of ten years. So we're really proud of our team and the extra work and our teachers that serve as coaches and coordinators. We established a program we're very proud of and we earned the Innovation Award from the diocese and that's called our LEAP program and it stands for Learn, Explore, Achieve program. And my first year as principal, I got together with the teachers and we decided that we needed a challenge component for third to fifth grade in the area of math. And we did research over the summer and created our own um, program that would differentiate instruction in math for those students. And we've expanded that to sixth grade. And uh, that class is, uh, has its own learning space that we'll, we'll go visit. Uh, we also have a stream lab that is two years old and that is in the eighth grade classroom. We use funds from um, a gala to furnish that room and we have innovative equipment in there and uh, stream is of course science, technology, religion, engineering, uh, visual arts and math. And we have our robotics club that we started last year. We have two uh, age levels of the robotics club and they also have their meetings in there. And uh, the Robotics Club it was another example of our collaboration with Aquinas High School. Uh, their Robotics Club uh, members and their coordinator came and kind of opened the doors for us and guided us through that. And it's just an extra enrichment activity that we have for our kids. So um, our school is preschool to eighth grade. And like I said, we have aides in the classrooms. Um, sixth through eighth grade, we differentiate instruction between on target and honors in math and ELA. We have monthly elective classes, quarterly dances, and we have an annual uh, science fair. And we also have uh, camps that our junior high students attend the second week of school. And we do that deliberately for bonding and for academic reasons. So our Sixth graders go to Astro Camp, and that's in Idlewild, and they're up there for three days. Our, we have parent chaperones that help. Our seventh graders go to a Christian Alpine Camp in Running Springs, and it's um, you know uh, Christianity built in with uh, team building exercises. And then our eighth grade students are in Catalina Island for five days. And as a former eighth grade teacher, I also get to attend that with the eighth graders. And it's a beautiful opportunity for 
our kids to learn about marine biology, but bond, bond as a class. And uh, so we look forward to those trips. We offer Spanish for um, students in kindergarten through eighth grade. We have a very strong music program and that's for kindergarten to eighth grade. We have um, a choir, a school choir, a school of rock band, and uh, our music teacher leads our morning assemblies every morning. The whole school is in our quad area, and we have prayer and announcements and pledge, and we honor birthdays, and then we end with song. And uh, Mr. Turner, our music teacher, will be there at a microphone, and we'll have members of our school band that will be out there, and uh, the kids are all singing and happily, you know, skipping off to class. Our parents often stay for our morning assembly and note that is one of the strong points of our school. We have drama productions in uh, preschool to eighth grade. Um, we have a traditional Christmas program where uh, Mr. Turner, our music teacher, writes a play. The eighth graders act in the play and the other grade levels come in throughout the play to sing a Christmas song. And this is so popular that we had to move this program from our church to the University of Redlands Chapel. And uh, we had standing capacity there. And we end the program with a living nativity where we have, you know, we have uh, Mary and Joseph and shepherds and kings and uh, the wise men and um, angels and Angel Gabriel and everything. And then we, they're walking down the aisle and they go up on the stage and we have a, a living, we have a, a real baby that um, symbolizes Jesus and that, that's a baby from one of our parents and our, our families look forward to that. Uh, we have, um, through our partnership with our parish, we had a parishioner that um, I was collaborating with and we got a grant for a Meet the Masters art program and our homeroom teachers um, implement components of that. We have um, physical education for preschool to eighth grade. And two years ago, I was really excited about this. Um, we uh, built a track around our field and uh, we became, we joined the 100 Mile Club and from 7.30 to 7.45 every morning, the students can do laps around the track. The uh, parent volunteers record the laps. We recognize their mileage. And this was, this was all based on a book called The Sports Brain where students that exercise before school, their behavior is better, their attention is better, and their academic achievement is better, and their self-confidence. So we have that as an optional program. Uh, we have, we participate in the, um, Sports programs for the diocese, the interscholastic sport team, sports teams, and that's flag football and volleyball and girls and boy basketball and soccer for different ages and track and cheerleading. We have a cheerleading group that goes out and supports our, our student athletes. Um, as far as our spiritual growth, we are strong in our Catholic identity. That's why we here, we're here. Uh, the teachers see this as this is their vocation. Um, many of our teachers, you know, uh, can be in a public school. They choose to be here um, because it's a Catholic Christian environment. So we start with our daily morning assembly, prayer, praise and worship, and that's led by the students and Mr. Turner. We have um, religion classes, of course, every morning, but we live our faith through our actions and words. Um, we're really excited to have um, implemented Catechesis of the Good Shepherd, which is a Montessori-based methodology that, um, again, partnership with the parish. Uh, we, our preschool teacher became certified in this. So preschool to third grade uh, goes down to a sacred space in the hall, and it's called the atrium. And that's where uh, Catechesis of the Good Shepherd is held, and we're the only school in the diocese that is participating in this program. Um, we have service opportunities um, that demonstrate Christian mercy and uh, Catholic social um, values and teachings. And uh, we transition service hours to service learning opportunities with a reflection piece. And you'll read more about that in the self-study. And um, three times, a minimum of three times a year, we uh, lead the parish Sunday masses and uh, we do at least one mass is in Spanish. And so we have our Spanish teacher and vice principal, Mrs. Downey, facilitates that. We have um, a um, multi-age family group, so we call SLE families, and those are student learning expectation families. And we do activities monthly that uh, practice Catholic social teachings and service and contributing to the community. 
And those are led, they're organized by a teacher, but the eighth graders are lead it. And the families are composed of students from eighth grade all the way down to kindergarten. And we have our eighth graders, our buddies with kindergarten, seventh with first and sixth with second. So they're always together in those families. And then we have our, our third, fourth and fifth graders. But we do activities in the classroom and we have that once a month. And um, you know, one of, an example is at Christmas we'll get a, a little tree and we'll decorate it as with Jesse tree ornaments and we actually go and deliver those to the neighbors um, in, in our historical neighborhood where we're located. We have uh, scouting programs for um, uh, students in kindergarten through eighth grade. We have a strong student council uh, that plans activities. They're busy, uh, they've been busy the last three weeks planning our Catholic Schools Week activities for next week. Uh, we have student study teams that um, are composed of teachers and administration and our resource support teacher um, and parents and uh, we meet and we analyze you know the progress of a student and we brainstorm and develop a plan for success for any students who need those, those that's been a very valuable uh, resource for us and the resource support teacher also is a liaison with Redlands Unified School District if we need further assessment and they can, she can translate the information to to the parents when the test results come out. Um, to help out our parents we have extended care before school and after school. Uh, before school starts we have a family mentor program uh, for our new parents and uh, they partner with a parent who's been here and that parent keeps in touch with them and lets them know about different events coming up and, and what they're all about and helps them. Um, we started a program called um, Watch Dogs, Dads of Great Students. Uh, that, that's been difficult uh, to get off the ground because uh, you know the, the, most of our dads don't have days off during the week where they can be on campus, but we do encourage dads to be um, here as much as they can. It's easier for, in our, with our demographics, our community, it's easier for our moms to be here, but we, we want our dads to be included. And so they, they may come out and, and help with uh, recess duty or um, you know, play basketball with kids or read to kids in a classroom. So we have some, we're a school rich in traditions. Um, I actually started teaching here in 1982. All my three adult children attended Sacred Heart Academy. I did leave for three years to teach in a, um, a public school after I got my first master's and to pay off tuition basically. And, um, but then I'm back. So we have many, many rich traditions and, um, one of the reasons, one of the traditions that we have that's my favorite is our May crowning that occurs in May. And uh, that is led, that liturgy is led by the eighth grade students. Um, we also have at the beginning of the year a back to school kind of coffee breakfast for our parents. We have a back to school picnic where uh, parents and families can bring lawn chairs and just have a picnic on the field and meet each other. We have an annual um, gala that we have brought back. It's kind of a benefit dinner dance uh, that brings in um, one of our largest fundraisers. And we have grandparents mass during Catholic Schools Week. We have a, a talent show. We have a faculty versus students volleyball game. Uh, we have teacher appreciation, student appreciation days. All of our, those are our traditional events for Catholic Schools Week. We have an annual science fair, Halloween carnival, our golf tournament. We participate in three track meets. We actually hosted one on ourselves at the University of Redlands about four years ago. Um, we have what's called a spring symposium, and um, that is where we take a particular topic, uh, like the Renaissance, for example, and or it could be literacy or um, or science or anything. And we have each class um, under that umbrella picks a theme, decorates their room, um, kids are in costume, they do different projects, and then parents come and they travel from classroom to classroom, and we have food and fellowship, and uh, that is always held um, the, the end, right before Memorial Day. And um, so it's kind of a, a great way to culminate the school year and bring everyone together. And um, now those are all the things that we do. So March 2020 hit and we transitioned to Catholic Online Synchronous Learning. And I'm very proud of the faculty because we uh, weren't fully immersed in Google Classroom. We had a few experts 
but uh, we actually met two weeks before we had to close school because we sensed that this may happen. And a group of the, the leadership team, we met and some other teachers and we said, okay, how are we gonna transition if we have to? And so we did make this transition. We also had plans to have um, uh, professional development in Google Classroom. We decided collaboratively as a, as a group that we wanted to transition to that. So we had that at the end of the year and the beginning of the year and we're now a G Suite school and that's helped a lot. So all the activities that I'm talking about, we have been virtually transforming to the best of our ability. Um, example, our graduation last year, instead of having it the first week of June, we pushed it back to the last week of July, praying and hoping that we could have it in church. Uh, that wasn't possible. We had it outdoors, but we did have the cap and gown. We did have the ceremony. Um, it wasn't the same, but um, we did the best that we could, and I know our graduates uh, appreciated that. So. Um, we're, uh, the school is in some old build, buildings. As you walk around, we've done our best to beautify them. You'll see murals and um, and just you know colors throughout the school. And uh, there is a plan to build a new church and a school uh, at a new site. Um, we've gone through three different changes of leadership, uh, parish leadership. So uh, right now with the pandemic going on, that is in a silent phase right now. So we don't have any definites about, about that, but it's exciting plans for the future. So we'll go ahead and we'll start taking a tour of our, our facility. So welcome, this is my office and where I meet with parents and students. And then right out here, we have our main office and here is Mrs. Barr and she is our office manager. We also have a space for our vice principal and she's teaching a Spanish class right now. And we'll head on out to kindergarten. So as you can see, this is our precious um, older school. We've done our best to add some color to it. Um, you can see we have a beautiful mur mural over there. And that was painted by the uncle of a graduate of Sacred Heart. And we'll go on into the kindergarten classroom. And and here is our kindergarten classroom. We are fortunate to be able to have um, some students here. The students that are here have uh, uh, parents who are teachers, or they're here for special situations. And so kindergartners, you want to say hello? Hi. Hi. And we have our wonderful instructional aide, Nicole, and we have our kindergarten teacher, Mrs. Tibbetts. <laughs> <Just simply. laughs> and here's an example of our virtual learning situation that she has going on here. The kids are on a recess right now. So they have 15 minutes to either socialize here or get their snack or tune off for 15 minutes before we come back at 10 o'clock in this hybrid situation. <laughs> so this is a perfect situation because our eighth graders are buddies with our kindergartners. And so we're gonna go on into the eighth grade classroom. I would like to pan around though and look at this beautiful space. Um, you can see that the kindergarten classroom has the stage and they have the mural on the back. And um, years ago, actually, when they were building the new hall, this actually was the parish hall. This space was the parish hall. Okay, bye guys, have a good day. Bye. 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 So this is our stream lab. Again, we are on virtual learning, so it looks a little different. But we have our uh, butcher block tables here. We have magnetic stools that the kids sit on and enjoy. We have uh, trash for recycling and regular trash. Um, we have these charcoal chem tables right here that um, students can use chemicals on. Then we have over here, we have our uh, whiteboard tables that students can actually use markers and write on. And we have the technology piece here. So we have two of these. And so um, it's uh, an excellent space for collaborative learning. And if we come on over here, okay, and as you can see, we're on our virtual learning path. And so we have our eighth grade teacher, 
Miss G, and um, so this is how she is operating over here with the, the distance learning. Um, each teacher has a web camera because she does, uh, she's our science teacher and does lab. She has a little bit more equipment here. Hey guys, one moment. And so, <laughs> so she is in the middle of class that we're interrupting, but that's okay. All good. And so uh, we have some students that are, that are in the space with us now. You guys are on film, smile. <laughs> okay. Awesome. So we're heading off now to our other Bye. junior high classes. Okay. We have our seventh grade classroom right here in this space. We have our sixth grade classroom next door in this space. And this is a beautiful mural that we were talking about and has all the symbols of Sacred Heart Academy as well as Redlands. And again, that was painted by a relative of a graduate who wanted to give back. I have to talk about the restroom because we had very old restrooms that really needed to be replaced, but we're being very conservative and good financial stewards of our money since the prospect of moving is out there. And so we had two parents that came and donated time and labor, and another parent donated money. And so we have a renovated restroom, and we have this wonderful mirror that they put in. We are working on repairs for the door, so that's what you see there. And so we're just very thankful for the parents that um, love our school and want to give back and donate, be benefactors for us. So one of our values is um, our SLEs, which being compassionate caretakers of creation. So we used to have um, water bottle stations um, down towards the eighth grade and it was so wasteful with all the plastic. So we got rid of all those. We encouraged kids to bring their own water bottle and now we have a hydro station. And so we encourage kids to use this and it tracks how much water we're using and everything. And so we have another one that we were gonna be putting out on the field. But again, that's living to our values of being um, compassionate caretakers of creation. So as we come over here, we have our uh, preschool right in front of us. So you can see this beautiful mur mural that a former instructional aide painted. And this is our preschool classroom and we have our preschool students with us, some of them. Hi, hi guys. You say, say hi to Mr. Turner. Hi. Say hi to our friends on the camera. Yeah. We have this beautiful classroom and um, everything, <laughs> everything for our young learners. And uh, we have our teacher, Ms. Aguilar, and our preschool director, Ms. Emmeline. Are you, are you eating your yummy snack? Yeah. And we have, um, following community care licensing, we have um, a special designated person, Ms. Rita Rogers, who um, does the cleaning for us. So you can see we have the restrooms back there and they have their office space. So beautiful preschool, wonderful teachers. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, guys. Bye. 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 Okay, so now we're headed down to our fifth grade, but I'm gonna turn around now because I want to show you the door in front of us is our bookkeeper's um, office. So as you can see, we have the markers. These are in front of our school office and uh, the office, the bookkeeper's office right here. When we open up, we'll have them in front of the classrooms, but they're the six feet markers. And as you can see, I'm not wearing a mask right now since I'm doing this presentation, but masks are mandatory and um, we have signs on the door that says that stop, the parents just don't walk in. Uh, they knock on the door, we check their temperature, we record the temperature, and then we help them with whatever they need. Now we'll go into our fifth grade classroom. So this is our fifth grade classroom. As you can see, we have some students with us, but this is also the setup for the virtual learning that our fifth grade teacher is using. Hi guys. I go to the school on Monday Hi there. and Wednesday. <laughs> 
So again, once we get students back in the classroom, things will look much different. <laughs> but, mm -hmm. but for right now, this is, uh, this is how it is. And thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Director. You're welcome. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. Okay, so we're going to head over this way. And um, this is the second wing of the classroom. This is our fifth to eighth grade wing, kindergarten and office. And we'll come over here. And we have, we're right next to the church. We have a um, gated facility for protection of the kids. On the classroom doors, if you notice, we have our safety uh, wear a mask signs. And um, we had a parent who, uh, put different symbols on the doors that represented that year. So we have right over here, this is kind of interesting, again, Compassionate Caretakers of Creation. So the drinking fountains were old. I think I did this about five years ago. They were falling apart, and, um, and so we started putting plants in them. So we have succulents that are in here, and third and fourth grade takes care of um, making sure they get watered. And so um, this tarp, Right here is um, uh, some parents put this up and it uh, blocks the sun because these classrooms would get hit by the sun and the doorknobs would be hot and things like that. So um, wonderful, another example of how our parents help us. And this is our fourth grade classroom. Okay. So yeah, I want you to do that. And as you go in, you can see our fourth grade teacher is leading class. It is her birthday today. <laughs> and so. And hi! Hi, guys! I'm going to my first guest with Miss Williams, my uh -huh. mom, Tegan's mom. <laughs> hi! Oh, yeah. Yep. Say hi, class. You can say hi. Good to see you guys. <laughs> hi! Did you guys know when I first. Yeah. Let me see if I can get in there. Yeah, you can come in. Make come over. Or okay. come over here. Mrs. Williams is going to talk to you, boys and girls. Okay. Oh, there we are. Okay. Did you got where who where should I, or, Did you or, guys know that when I was first teaching here, this was my first classroom I was in. I was a fourth grade teacher, it's my first classroom. So this classroom is very special to me. Oh. In this yeah. room. In this this room. room. Wow. In this room. Nice. Yep. That's awesome. So well, have a great day, you guys. And I'm glad you're treating her special. It's they her birthday are. today. They are. Okay. Bye, Miss Bye. 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 Thank you. You're welcome. Um, this is this is Ann Allada. She is a fourth grade instructional aide. She helps with seventh grade language arts and she is our campus minister. So she has a daily reflection that goes into or a weekly reflection that goes in the parent note, but she also helps a lot with junior high and just, just different things with us. So well, thank you, Ann. Thank you. <laughs> okay, boys and girls, you can go ahead and recess. So now um, if you turn around over here, I'm sorry we're looking through these, the gate, but this is a church. And uh, that is one of the side entrances that um, we enter for our masses. We do do a weekly school mass virtually now. Um, uh, when we're in session, each week a grade is in charge of planning the mass and leading it and hosting it. And so now the teacher does that. But we do live stream it every week and students um, attend it and parents attend it as well. Sacramento Reconciliation is in second grade. First Eucharist is in third grade. So as we go into the third grade door, this is why you're going to see the chalice and host on the door. And this is our third grade classroom. Hi. And this is Mrs. McFarland. And again, this is how she is operating. My lovely classroom. Like online synchronous this is my learning. third grade class. Can we all say hi, third grade class? Hi. Hey, what, what are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? We're, fil we're, we're, we're showing some friends that are going to visit our school virtually, our classrooms and our teachers, and you. Raise your hand if you're lizard. Is and you guys. Oh. <laughs> you Record that. Sorry, we're trying to get our technology going okay and it's a little slow today but yeah, yes it's a typical day in COVID. Yeah. <laughs> yes it's a little slow yeah but the, the kids are patient with me so so you can see she has her webcam she has two different um computers and uh anything anything that helps to facilitate instruction and she has a couple of students with her too hi guys hi thanks for joining okay. us so this is this is a beautiful cross um we had 
um, a family that um, their children all attended Sacred Heart. In fact, their daughter, their, four, uh, their daughter um, was in my class, my first year teaching here when I taught fourth grade. And she is now our resource support teacher, Nicole Harris. Well, her parents passed away and they uh, were devout um, Catholics and um, attended mass daily. And so they actually um, gifted us with this beautiful cross and heart. And this is from uh, in memory of Tom and Mary Clore. And now we have our first and second grades. And so this is our second grade classroom. And again, you can see that um, we have the sign on to stay safe and stay healthy and wear a mask. And we'll come on inside. And this is the second grade classroom. And so you can just imagine um, with all the kids here, but uh, Mrs. Noble is our wonderful Here's second grade teacher, and she is now doing her dishes. Father Tom learning. takes care of the From garden. Her spot. He waters <laughs> all the flowers, <laughs> sings with the birds, enjoys the There's sunshine, no and yeah. pets rabbits that hop by. Oh, I love the way that you use oh, this um, iPad as a book reader. Yes. Overgrown thorn bushes. This is, an, this is an example of how creative and talented our teachers are who just use different strategies for effective teaching and learning. And hi. Hi. It's all hi. Hi. It's good to see you. If I, if I mute myself, they can't hear the video. Okay. So, that, so we're just going with this. Okay. Hi, I miss you. Oh, we'll be back together soon. I miss you guys. Thank you for being big helpers for Mrs. Noble. Aw, God bless you. <laughs> okay. All right, second grade. All right, second grade. We're going to um, we'll go ahead and resume. So this is, a, as you can see, um, you know, we're in an older building. But um, this, is, this room is an example of the dedication our teachers have to keeping things as colorful and as bright and stimulating as they possibly can. It's a beautiful classroom. It's so it puts a heart and soul into it. And um, every classroom has a prayer corner for center, so you can see this one here. Okay, now we'll go on to our first grade. So we're gonna go ahead, I want you to take a look at the doors. Um, especially the, the first grade door over here, they're very old. Um, and we have been, we're blessed because we have a parishioner who's a big supporter of our school, uh, Paul Letson, and uh, he worked with our former pastoral coordinator and he wrote a grant. And with that grant, um, the monies that they received, they're going to be doing security measures um, for the church and for the school and for the school what what is being replaced is every classroom door and every lock and all of the office doors and we're really excited about that because um they're very old and we have issues with them and this one as you can see this one we had we had trouble with but we we need it for uh security for the kids and so we're excited about that and that should be happening in about six weeks okay here's the first grade classroom and uh, the same gentleman who painted the mural for preschool did that mural up there for first grade. Jonathan, did you find your So she, Mrs. Marquez, is in the process of teaching her class. And she did something very creative. Okay, just listen and you can do the answers later. So this is Mrs. Marquez's uh, workstation over here. But look what she did with her, with her class. And she has cut out figures, right. kind of like what so you would see at a, a sports stadium of her kids. That, that and I know, know this helps her because she had mentioned when school started, what a lot of what a lot of teachers had mentioned is that they just feel lonely mm -hmm. without having their kids here. Yes, it was very lonely. So yeah, <laughs> it's nice to have faces to look at. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this is our first grade classroom, and uh, this grade. This grade is one of the last grades that has uh, the individual desks that are summer and th that we're going to be looking at uh, replacing these. Um, some cla more classrooms, elementary grades are moving to tables. So we'll have, um, when the students return, we'll have desk shields on the desks and uh, 
on the tables to separate. All the kids will be wearing a face mask or a face shield. All teachers will wear the mask and the shield. We have sanitizing stations um, outside of the classroom and we have hand washing stations for each classroom. So we'll be able to reduce the traffic going into the restroom. We also have air purifiers from, for every classroom. This is something that we um, purchased with CARES Act. But we also but we're very concerned about the safety of our kids and um, the uh, assurance of our reopening plan being valid. And so we participated in the NCA uh, early day of giving with the goal of 10,000 and we achieved the 10,000. So we're very confident now that we're in the process of getting all of the safety equipment and measure, measures in place. We have uh, an abundance of masks in the office for students and for teachers and for adults. And we have uh, infrared thermometers that are being used for um, uh, when people come visit the classroom, but they will also be used as students exit the car once we get back on campus to make sure that it's okay for them to come into the classroom. We have a fog machine that is our custodian uses in the evening to uh, spray every classroom. And we have the disinfectant materials and things like that for the teachers to use. So um, we're ready. As soon as we get the green light, we're ready to, to safely, safely bring our kids back. So let's step on outside. So, uh, again, beautifying this old campus, we, um, have a that's our symbol the heart with the cross in it so we had we put that up there that was a gift donated to us um, over here in where if you look over there you can see a white angel that were the Sacred Heart Angels and of course that is our flagpole and that area right there is where we have our morning assembly right in front of that angel every grade is out and we have our morning assembly that I talked about with song and um, and prayer and announcements and birthdays and then we have our marquee and it says on the journey choose joy that's our theme for the year we have a choice of how we're going to um, deal with this pandemic and the isolation and then this is kind of the theme of our entire school what everything's based on be it known to all of you under here that christ is a reason for the school the unseen but ever-present teacher in classes the model of its faculty, the inspiration of its students. So that is, that's a reminder as uh, parents drop their kids off, they come driving in through this gate and go around and we love that they are able to see that. They know what, uh, what they're dedicating their kids to. Mm. Okay, as we walk out here, we have our uh, grass field. Now we, we're gonna pan around so you can see the fencing. So the fencing is all here, and that is uh, shut and locked when the kids are present. There's a gate down by first grade. Parents buzz in to come in to enter. We allow them to enter. And uh, that this keeps our kids safe when they're playing. And we come out over here. And really excited about our 100 mile club. I'm a runner, so I loved having this. We have, um, this is our track that goes all the way around. Again, it looks very different since we're virtual right now. Um, under these green canopies, we have our lunch tables, which are stacked over there because this is our church right now, uh, since we have our church outdoors. And then we have our playground over here. And then we'll walk on this way. And this is our playground for our kindergarten to um, eighth grade students. Eighth grade usually doesn't get on there. Um, and then we have our preschool playground over here. And this is, you can see that this is gated in. And we have a, what's called a gaga pit. We had a parent build this years ago and a graduate of Sacred Heart painted St. Michael. And so the kids will get in here and Gaga is a game where they're down and they're um, smacking a ball around. But the painting is beautiful and the kids love it. They have a lot of fun. Okay, so we're nestled in a historical neighborhood. The streets are very narrow on either side of us. 
the town is, um, it's a historical town, Redlands is, but um, beautiful buildings, um, beautiful old homes, but it does create traffic. So our dismissal and pickup is strategic. This kind of looks like organized chaos, but we have cars uh, pulling in from 4th Street and circling around. Every staff member is out at dismissal and um, we know the parents' cars and we walk the kids to their cars. So that's a nice safety measure. Um, when we get back on campus, uh, when parents arrive, we'll be doing the temperature check and if they're okay, the family walks, uh, the kids get out of the car, they walk to their classrooms. Typically that we would have some playtime in the morning before that, but um, that's something we're gonna have to just massage depending on what tier we're in with our uh, with the pandemic. So if you look over here, um, we talked about we have the, the uh, lunch tables are stacked up over there, but nestled in a corner is um, a grotto. And this was built by an Eagle Scout. And so we have a statue of Mary and we had um, we have um, rocks around it and we had a recyclable kind of a waterfall flowing through it. Um, we're in the process of moving that. We'll head on over here. We're in the process of moving that because um, we wanted to kind of centralize um, a, a kind of a quiet, sacred faith space. And so we had a, um, Another friend of the school whose brother-in-law is our PE teacher, and he created a beautiful cross. We're gonna go look at that. And we're gonna move the Statue of Mary over there. And we have a bench that we're moving over there too. So this area is kind of in transition. It kind of looks like a mess right now because we have our lunch tables over here. But years ago, we had two garden plots for each grade. I wrote a grant. Uh, with BP and uh, got, uh, we got $10,000 and so we put flower, we had planters in and we had a school garden and kind of the enthusiasm was waning on that. Mm -hmm. And so what we did is we, we took some plant planters out and we have a, a fitness area here. So you can see we have a balance beam type thing here. We have an activity there. We have something for sit ups over here. Um, this is our. This is a weather station that also went with our garden. And then we had a um, bench that was donated by a benefactor. And as we come over this way. Again, a lot of this is under construction because um, they're creating a church and they're using a lot of this space back here uh, for storage. And so you can see more fitness equipment here. And we have a table. And then this is our... So this is our grotto. And um, again, it's... Uh, under construction, we're going to be moving a lot of this over by the cross that uh, that the other the other friend of the school has built for us. We have a garden and extended care shed right here. We have some garden materials in there, but our um, extended care supervisor has games and toys and equipment in there. And again, this is the space where we normally would have lunch, but it is now serving as our church. We had to rainproof it. Yeah, and cover it up because of the rain. Okay, so now we're going to um, take a look at this. This is a tradition at our school. This is the Marion Award, and this goes to one or two seventh graders who exhibits the qualities of our Blessed Mother, saying yes to God, being kind, a friend to all. And each year we have we nominate people and then we have a uh, their names are posted on here so the marion awards award is something that um kids strive to achieve and it's a very honorable very special award for our kids okay you can see another we have another safety sign that's up reminding people to wear a mask keep your distance wash your hands don't touch your face disinfect and now we're going to head over to 
the bookkeeper's office. And I wanna show you this space because we are stretched to capacity. We have uh, two classrooms, three classrooms over in spaces in the parish hall. And that doesn't include the atrium. And so we had, uh, formerly we had, um, our bookkeeper was in the front office with all of us, which made it, she didn't have any quiet space and confidential space to talk to people about financial matters. So what we did is we had this hallway and this was just a closet. And so we had a parent who volunteered to help and we transformed this into We transformed this space into our bookkeeper's office. <laughs> it used to be a hallway, like I said, that had closets. We took it all out. So um, the parent painted for us, and so the bookkeeper has her space back here, and she can talk with parents. And then we have our school counselor, who is also our athletic director. Um, he has a space right here. And so typically, though, he will meet with kids I'm kind of outside, so they have that privacy, but since he's a PE teacher, he often does a lot of his counseling through, you know, his talking to kids during PE class, but kids do make appointments with him, and parents do schedule appointments for their kids with him. Um, all of the kids sign, uh, parents sign a permission slip for their uh, child to be able to speak with coach, we call him coach. So we're gonna head now over to the hall, and now I'll show you some spaces that we use for the hall. Okay, so during school, when we have the kids in session, and even now when we have a few kids, we have the gates that are locked. A parent will um, buzz at this gate to um, be able to enter. We have a camera, we can see who they are. Um, this, in addition to the classroom doors, is something that will be replaced. So we're happy, we're happy about that. Doing our best, doing our very best with the old facilities we have. Mm -hmm. So we have, um, this is kind of the, our carport space and we do have teachers that will sometimes um, bring a group of kids out here and work with them to differentiate instruction in some small groups. Back in 1999 when I came, this was the lunch tables. Right, right. Mm -hmm. So Mr. Turner, by the way, our music teacher is our videographer and uh, very talented in multi areas. So we had, um, this is very special. This will go with us if, we, if the school moves, but we had a little second grader many years ago um, who um, was diagnosed um, with a brain tumor that was inoperable and she ended up passing away. And so we have, it's called the Melissa Blue Tree and uh, she passed in, in 2000 and her uh, classmates and parents fundraise for this and so we have this tree and this plaque in honor of her. So this is our parish hall, and you can see pictures from um, our original church. And it, there it is right there. And um, we this is uh, Thomas Fitzgerald. He was a founding pastor of Sacred Heart Church. Now it is a holy name of Jesus Church. We have, um, there are there is a formerly St. Mary's Church, and that is over on Columbia Street. This is the Sacred Heart, formerly the Sacred Heart Church, which is on Olive, and the two have combined into the holy name of Jesus Church. So we're one large community. And so we have a couple of classes that are down in, in the basement of the hall. Teachers meet their students at the gate, and the students walk with the teacher, and they're down to the space. So we're gonna go down into Mr. Van Sant's space. He teaches um, junior high social studies in their homeroom classes, but he also teaches language arts and language arts class and on target group. And he teaches them in his space, this space right here. So this right here is Mr. Van Sant's space. And if we would have 
If we had kids here, you would see a lot of creative, flexible seating. He got really creative with this a couple years ago and the kids love this space. And this is his workstation, virtually. Standing action station. So you can see the webcam and his screen and all of the devices that he needs to effectively teach. Thank you, Mr. Van Sant. Thank you. No problem. Okay, and then this is exciting because I can show you a little bit of the atrium. So the atrium is a sacred space for catechesis of the Good Shepherd. But you can see right here is you have, you have um, miniature models of like the city of Jerusalem. You have, um, there's different levels. And so you have the kits depending on the age of the child. You can have here where they're talking about the chalice. They have objects here when they teach the kids about um, Eucharist liturgy of the light that is the ceremony that they have talk about baptism the symbols for baptism there's a prayer corner over there so they teach all of the, all of the things that are used in mass that kids learn about at this early age and and there are, we've noticed a big increase in reverence and understanding and participation and again this space is used by our preschool to third graders and they know how to enter quietly and reverently and um, participate. Okay, so this is our leap room and this is a, a program that we created, kind of a gifted program for our uh, students in third to sixth grade math and it's Learn Explore Achieve program. We came up with that acronym and um, our teacher is GATE certified, Kathy Setter, and um, she did an amazing job. She does a lot of um, project-based learning activities in here, a lot of, as you can see, math talk. Um, so this is a space that a small group comes into. The more we can break classes into smaller groups and differentiate instruction, we jump on it and we do it because we know that that's what's best for the kids. And we're meeting them right at their level and challenging them, or we're meeting them and helping them with any remediation or extra support that they need. So this is Mrs. Setter's leap classroom. Both of, our, both of her kids graduated from Sacred Heart a lot. All three of mine did. A lot of our, the teachers have children who are graduates of Sacred Heart. We're gonna head um, up to the main floor and up to another space, which is where uh, if the kids were on campus, again, there would be a on-target class being taught up there in language arts and math. So we're gonna head back up here. So through, like I said, we're in the parish hall. Down this hallway right here are the parish offices. But of course, they are closed and they're, they're working from home during this time. And this is our large space. This is the parish hall. This is where um, we have assemblies, where we have school dances, we have our talent show. Here, and as you, you can see, it's organized for on-site parish meetings, practicing all the social distancing and safety issues. And we have the kitchen back over here. Into, into a space that is used by, like I said, the on-target math and language arts classes, or sometimes it may be the honors. And so, like I said, we've spread out everywhere. So the teacher teaches from here if the kids were on site and the kids use this space for learning. So we're very appreciative to uh, Father Eric and Monica Aguilar and everyone who kind of uh, shares this space with us and is tolerant <laughs> of the trampling up and down the stairs. Mm -hmm. So then we have additional parishes offices to do this store. And we're just really fortunate and blessed because over the years we've had an excellent relationship with, um, with the parish. We worked with the faith formation director and the confirmation director and the youth minister for the parish actually goes with the eighth graders um, on the Catalina trip. And he and Mr. Turner um, perform a morning prayer service on the beach 
every morning. So we have that, we, we are constantly building relationships and connecting with each other to support the youth and the faith formation of everyone. So now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna head into the church. And um, students will typically come through because we're gated. So we'll open the gates that you'll see to your left. We open these gates and students will come down here and use this entrance to come into the church. And so this is our, this is our beautiful church. Hello. Hello. And this is our um, liturgy coordinator, Carlo. Hello. And so you can see that this is the beautiful church where we have our school masses and uh, liturgies and prayer services. And of course, right now, everything's outdoors. But thank you. Thank Not a problem. You. We will be live streaming our Catholic Schools Week Mass this Sunday from here. So, thank you. This is our precious, wonderful school that we all love and very passionate about. Um, we're passionate about what goes on within these four walls, with the walls of each classroom. Um, we've done our best to differentiate learning. Um, and like I said, we spread out to the parish hall, but we also uh, went that stream lab. We didn't just confine it to junior high. We've stretched those classes down to fourth grade through eighth, went in and used that space and learned in that space. And this year it's fifth to eighth. We'll probably go back to fourth to eighth next year. And other, other teachers that want to um, use that space are invited to do that as well. So um, we're just constantly innovating and doing what's best to improve student learning and um, we wish you could be on site with us but um, I hope this has given you a little glimpse of what our school's about and um, look forward to seeing you all in March. Thank you.